Hey guys, John Bergsman here, Fisherman's Digest. We're here in beautiful Manistee in front of one of my favorite train bridges right here at InstaLaunch Campground. And behind me is an awesome campground that Jim and his wife have been running and do a great job. We got five great fishing reports. We're gonna talk about river fishing in the Osabo River with Captain Gene Curvin. We're gonna talk just a little bit with um, Brian Bice from To Be Caught Charters about the great fishing going on right now in Muskegon Lake. Then we're gonna slide across and we're gonna talk about three Great Lakes options. All of them are lights out. Saginaw Bay, a combination of perch and walleye with Mike Martin from Mike Martin Outdoors. We're gonna slide over to Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair, the bite is nothing short of stupid. That's the only way you can describe it. It's awesome, it's on fire. Get out the water because you're gonna to have to spray it because that's how hot it is right now. Same is true in Monroe, Michigan. Captain Nick Dude from um, Real Live Action Sport Fishing Charters gave us a great report. He's whacking the fish. We've got all of our guides still on the water, still having fun, stay tuned. We move around the state all the time trying to show you these great gems, these outdoor sports shops that are really serving the community. And Dave and Aaron here and the staff at Domka Outdoors do just that here in the greater Monroe region for the western basin of Lake Erie all the way down to the Ohio line. If you're looking for an awesome sports shop that's got live bait, that's got friendly service, that's got all your favorite custom colors, as well as all the other stuff, whether you're a hunter, an archer, or an ice fisherman, Dave and the folks here at Domka Outdoors is the place to come right here on La Pleasance Road in Monroe. So hey, we're gonna start at Lake Erie, Monroe, Luna Pier, Bulls Harbor, Sterling State Park, you know, the, you know the drill. And we got Captain Nick Dude out there from Real Live Action Sport Fishing. Nick tells me that the fishing has been phenomenal. Boat limits for four, five, six guys, no problem at all. We're catching them on the same old standard thing. I grabbed a couple of my favorites, P10 and a Bandit, custom colors. Um, I've gone through this many times with you guys, bright days, bright late, or baits like chromes and golds, dark days, more fluorescence like this hot pink with white and dots on it. The real thing that you gotta stay with right now is I would lean more towards the P10s. You've got water temps below 40 now, upper 30s. That usually means the slow roll of the P10 is gonna be good. Now, if you're running Bandits or DHJ 12s, which is that great big Rapala Husky, the leads out have been somewhere between 40 and 80, straight out, no weight unassisted, behind clipping on an offshore board, send it out. Send a couple out that way on each side and that'll get you started. Then you can do snap weights with P10s. The best set that Nick said is going is 30-30. So it's put your P10 on your line, run out 30 feet, put a two ounce snap weight on, 30 more feet, offshore board, send it out. That 30, 32 ounce has been lights out for him. Don't be afraid also to do 30, 31 ounce or one and a half ounce, just to get one just in a little different zone. A lot of times that'll help you with line tangles. Let me explain. If you run the third, so you got two out on boards and then you got one out where you're gonna clip it on with a one and a half, 30, 30, one and a half. Then you run a couple of two ounces on the inside. That two ounce will run a little bit deeper. It'll help that third rod clear over top of the other inside boards. That's just a little tip. It's not gonna run totally different, maybe a couple foot difference, but sometimes in the cleaner water there out on Lake Erie, if it hasn't been too windy and has gotten too stained up, that couple feet really won't matter. Those fish will still come up and slam that, but it'll also make your sets work a lot better for you. So Monroe Luna Pier, it's gonna go all the way till Christmas, guys. I fished the week before Christmas the last three years. We've got upper 30s. We've got some really moderate temperatures. If it's Wednesday and you guys are watching me, Wednesday, Thursday of this week are gonna be beautiful, 40s, mid 40s. That's not gonna get the water any colder. So these fish are gonna be going all the way to January 1. If you are already got your boat put away, call Nick, get out there on the water. But hey, whatever you do for next year, don't put that boat away so quick. Put the cover on it, keep it ready to go because this fishing has been going all the way to Christmas every year. Are you in the market for a new trailer? 
For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127, north of St. John's. So we're up on Lake St. Clair now. We've slid up just a little ways up into the Metro Detroit area. And uh, Mark Malvick from the bait shop tells me that the bite up on that St. Clair River has just been awesome. You know, Mark's got a great little bait shop there in Waterford and a lot of the Detroit locals are aware of it. And he's got all the stuff you need for trolling right now, even though he's kind of leaning a little bit more towards ice fishing, he's still got great information. He's tight with Captain Eric Long, our Lake St. Clair expert. Eric and Mark talk all the time, so he can put you on the report, but we've got a report up on our website, fishermansdigest.com, to help you get started. And the bite has been from St. Clair Shore around to the mouth of the Detroit River. It's been in about 12 to 18 feet. That bends the best overall depth to have your boat in. And fishing has been basically 20 to 50 back on bandits. Not much deeper than 50. You're in that shallower water, you get too much further back than 50 or 60 and you're gonna risk ticking bottom in 18 feet of water. Um, a lot of guys are doing a combination of bandits on the out, uh, band, P10s on the outside, two P10s high, maybe 40 to 80 back, and then a couple of bandits on the inside, you know, for an eight rod spread. And silver and blues have been great, golds have been great, uh, fluorescence on the dark days have been great, or purples with white on them, that's been also very, very good. But Lake St. Clair right now, trolling speed, one two to one four. Remember, we've talked all year long about how you adjust to the cooling temperatures. Speed and action of bait is the two biggest keys to adjusting. Once you get below 40 degrees, you should be in that one two to one four speed range, and you should have at least half of your baits be P10s because P10s are the best cold water bait that I've ever used. So make those two adjustments, start integrating those P10s in with your bandits or your deep jerks, and you'll definitely increase your catch. And on sunny days, don't ignore the high fish. A lot of fish will still come up and try to warm themselves a little bit on those bright sunny days, and guys will be fishing below them all day long. So always run that way outside bore, up pretty high, 20, 30 back with a P10 is probably only going to be down about five, six feet. That can be a lights out bait on sunny days. So we're here with Lee from Wave Pro, and one of the most uh, important aspects of the Wave Pro shock to me as a past tournament angler is the square footage, is the is the fact that Wave Pro just doesn't occupy any bigger of a footprint in my boat than just a regular old seat base that would come standard from the factory. And, and what's the weights that we're dealing with? Because that's another issue to a lot of people. Some of our competitive products are really bulky and heavy. Yeah, ours are six, seven pounds, depending on the version of it. And right, then so we four use of the them. same bolt holes as Atwood and Springfield. Right. We and we even have Garelix footprint. Right, and I noticed what's really cool for me too is, is just the quick changeover. You know, I mean, you back those screws, screws out, the same screws that are in there from the factory, remove that factory base, drop the Wave Pro product on, right back into the same holes. I've done yeah. it on two different models of boats now, and it's worked perfectly every time. And the other thing I like is if you notice that throughout the show, for me, I know when I drive, I like, and like everybody, they have certain positions they like to put their feet and angles to put their legs yeah. so that they feel comfortable when they're running. When you have our product, we're not robbing any of that space below the seat that stops you from putting that foot at the particular angle yeah. that you're comfortable running. Yeah, you can tuck them under the seat and right. right to the side where there's no restriction there. You can right. put a cooler under them if you need to. Right, exactly. And that's the thing. I have a spoon box when I salmon fish, and that spoon box is probably only eight inches high, but it fits nestles perfectly along the wall, and I like keeping it there. If I hadn't had the Wave Pro, that space would be gone. I wouldn't no. be able to use it for that. Mm -hmm. So it's a little thing, but the little things all added up mean that the Wave Pro is a superior seat base and it's a superior product for your boat. Beautiful. So we're going to slide a little bit north again and we're going to head up to the Franks Bait and Tackle region and that's going to be Saginaw Bay. Now we've been talking perch fishing for the last month or month and a half and let me tell you the perch are still biting there. Captain Mike Martin from Mike Martin Outdoors says that the perch are going to bite all the way up until first ice and then of course they'll go nuts after first ice when you're out on the hard water. 
But if you got some perch pounders and you want to wear them out, right now on the top of the roll on either side of the shipping channel from basically outside the mouth of the river all the way out to buoy one and two, that's the look zone for the perch right now. They've been holding out in that deeper water. The perch pounders have been really laying a number to them. Uh, if I was going to give you a couple of colors, I'm going to tell you the salmon color, that, that kind of orangish pink color. Also the green color or the chartreuse color. Those three colors. Get over to Frank's Great Outdoors. Talk to Ernie or one of the guys. Get yourself a handful of perch pounders. Listen, it's a no gamble thing, right? Because if you don't use them this fall, you'll be out in the spring using them. And I'll tell you what, they're dynamite baits. They work all the time. And I love the little way that they impart color to the presentation. But let's talk walleyes. So a friend of mine gave me a call with some good information that same area in general, we've got two areas. We've got the area in front of Linwood Beach Marina in that 14 to 18 foot. He's been encountering some fish 100 back, 80 to 100 back on deep husky jerk number 12s. Now it's important to pay attention to the 12s because that 80 to 100 back on the 12 is, is, is the right depth. If you go up to the 14s, you're gonna to wanna to reduce that to about 50 to 65 back on the 14s. Both baits have been producing. Purple and white has been a really good color. Gold with a purple, a shiny purple head has been really good. And in general, perch patterns have been really, really super effective in the last two to three weeks out there on Saginaw Bay. There's also a group of fish along the shipping channel from the island all the way out to buoy one. Either side of the roll, the top of the roll, 25 to 30 feet of water somewhere in there. A lot of guys are catching those fish in the mid depths, so that's gonna be DHJ 12s, maybe 50 to 65 back, or bandits, maybe 75 to 90 back. Somewhere in there, that's gonna be a good depth. You're gonna see them, and again, don't ignore the high fish on the really calm, sunny days. It can really happen, and I see it all the time. So get out there on Saginaw Bay. Probably got a couple of more weeks of fish because the weather's looking quite nice, actually, guys. A lot of upper 30s and 40 degrees days coming in the next 10 days. And you know what? With that kind of weather, those fish are gonna start snapping because they know ice is coming and it's time for them to lay on the bottom. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed, carport, or small storage building? Visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. So we're going to keep on that east side of the state and slide up to the Osabo River where Captain Gene Curvin from uh, Calypso Sport Fishing has been in the river with his drift boat. Guys, he is whaling on really nice fish. And the fun thing about what Captain Gene does is he gets you going not just on steelhead, but on Atlantic salmon. You know, on that east side of the state, the Atlantics are really, really prevalent. They've really taken hold well. And the Osabo River has got a really, really good number of Atlantics in the river already. So. What is he doing to catch him? And this is what you got to listen up because you got to get out with Captain Gene. He's got some open dates. This is super fun. So he's in a drift boat, right? And so it's really scenic and calm. And the Osable is already crazy nice. But he's hot shotting these. So that's using a wee wart, maybe 60, 80 foot behind the boat. And then you hold that rod. And then Captain Gene will kind of sweep you. He'll be stationed up above the hole and he'll kind of sweep you through the hole with his paddling skills. And I'm telling you what, guys, when they hit that wee wart, hold on with both hands because the fish are gonna be out of the water flipping and jumping. The battle will be on. You catch a really high percentage of them on that crankbait because they're hooked up pretty good. And it's a totally cool way to do it. And here's the second part of his program that I think makes this so good. So you can cast until you're tired and then you can sit down and hot shot until you recover and then go back to casting. And what is he casting? Blue fox spinners, blue with a red bead, Fire Tiger patterns have been lights out. And what's fun about that is same deal. Captain Gene will hold you in that critical spot to one side of a deep pool. And you stand and cast to the top side of the pool, let that, let that sweep through, and just hit different parts of that pool with a spinner. 
and that spinner attack is unbelievable. It's so fun to get a hit with a spinner because I mean one second you're reeling and the next second the drag is going the opposite way and you are hooked up. So get out with Captain Gene. The Osabo River, either hot shot and wee warts or casting blue fox spinners. Listen, it's go time right now for the rest of the year here and well into the all the way into March for Captain Gene. This is his time of year. This is the river he loves to fish. Give him a call at Calypso Sport Fishing Charters. Hey sportsman, John Bergsman here with Fisherman's Digest. We're here today with Mike from Flowfast. Mike the first thing I noticed when I showed up and started looking your system over is we got all these different colors. Let's go through the colors and what they stand for. Yeah, so the red is going to be for gasoline, yellow is for diesel, blue is for kerosene, and the natural colors for chemicals, could be hazmat materials, could even be water. And we do make them in all the different size containers from our 7.5 to our 10.5 that you see here and in our 15 gallon size too. Wow, that really makes for a, a really interesting thought that just hit me while we're, while we're talking about all these different, I mean a guy like a hobby farmer or a, or a guy who let, has a tractor or a skid steer, anything like that, he can build a system using our cart to have all the different fuels that he's gonna use on his property. Yeah, I mean, you can buy the system, you can buy a complete system like you see here, or you can buy individual containers and pumps by themselves, and you can actually mix and match if that, you wanted gasoline and diesel, you probably are gonna want two, dip, two pumps for the- Right, with the, the gas and diesel so you don't contaminate either. Correct, correct. Right, but that system right there, just looking at, that makes a ton of sense to me for a lot of people that I know who are gonna have, you know, I know a lot of farmers, a lot of guys who have property up north, they're deer camps, you know. They got a tractor up there, which is a diesel. And then they got mm -hmm. four wheelers like we got behind us who are getting to and from the blind and just, you know, doing, putting in food plots. That type of system looks like it's just the berries for just getting it done and having that gas you need when you need it. Yeah, and you can move up to eight gallons per minute with it. So whatever you're fueling, it works very well. You know, whether it's the power sports market, the farm and ag, lawn and garden, marine market, Flowfast makes refueling safe, fast, and it's very easy to use. That sounds off awesome. So, hey, check out all of Mike's products at flowfast.com. That's flowfast.com. And you know what? I think this would look great on your farm. Last report of the day, we're going to slide all the way across and we're going to talk with the guys over at Snug Harbor Outdoors over on the Muskegon Lake system. And man, guys, this, this whole area is on fire right now. We've got really, really good walleye fishing. And it, uh, as I told you a few weeks back, it, it started out as a night fishery. It's nighttime, it's daytime, it's anytime right now. Muskegon Lake is going. It's going with big crankbaits. You're going to fish it Lake Erie style just big crankbaits in the mid depths. You're gonna be looking at your Garmin. You're gonna be identifying where those marks are holding. You're gonna be putting those big cranks right above their head, maybe a couple feet. You don't wanna to get too far away from them at this time of the year because they are 37 degrees right now, 38 degrees uh, there in the lake. So, you know, those fish aren't gonna be really charging for three, four, five feet to get a bait. You wanna put it right there a foot or two above their head. So bait control or depth control with your bait is really important. So. Use the Precision Trolling app to get those P10s right where they need to be. If you need to snap weight them, you know, you know, tighten up those snap weights, maybe instead of going 30, 30, 30, 40, or 30, you know, do five foot increments where 30, 25, 30, 30, 30, 35, you're gonna have to really tighten that zone up till you see one that starts to go and then crowd in around that one. But brightly colored big P10s are working great. Big Bandits are working great. 1.2 to 1.4, that's the speed. And listen, if you get a windy day and you've committed to go fish there, a lot of the back marinas and around the docks and around some of the deep cuts outside the marinas are holding good numbers of perch. So you can take your perch pounder, you can get right down, and Muskegon Lake is a prolific perch fishing lake, and you can have a great day doing that. You can even combo fish. You can perch fish for a few hours. You can walleye fish for a, two, for a few hours. I find that the best walleye bite isn't necessarily first thing in the morning. It's more of a 10 to four bite in the afternoon. It's like the, the heat of the day, if there is such a thing as heat right now, but the sunlight gets up enough so that they got better light penetration. They find your bait a little bit easier. But hey, if you're looking for great information or all the custom crankbaits and all of the stuff you need for your trip, 
right there at the top of the state ramp there on Muskegon Lake is Snug Harbor Outfitters. Jeff and the guys do a great job of keep, keeping their store fully stocked. Check in on them. Let them know that you watched the fishing report. And hey, we'll see you again next week. Hey, I know that was a totally information packed thing. But one of the things I want all of our viewers to always know is that I spend a ton of time on Sunday and Monday compiling this information and that this information is not old. This is information that I typically, like this morning, I had a conversation with Gene Curvin. I had a conversation with Jeff from Snug Art Harbor. I talked with Mike Martin from Mike Martin Outdoors last night. Mike's on the water today. So this information we're giving you is as recent of information as you can get. And we hope that you enjoy this video fishing report. We hope that it helps you make decisions of where to go and how to at least start fishing. We all know fish got tails and fish move and swim. And so a spot that was going, you know, yesterday might not be going in three days. But right now, this time of year with this cold weather, these fish are pretty locked in. So this information is going to be pretty much you can take it to the bank and go have some success with it. Thanks for joining us on this week's fishing report. We'll see you again next week.